Hello there everybody, Ridgy Time here again with another 30 nil snap video I'm recording this session at 20 past 12 on a Monday morning, Sunday night going into Monday morning and then um, we're hoping to get some good action the pool does appear quite reggy right now but um, that's not too much of a concern because that's pretty much what all speed poker pools are like these days so we're going to try and actually do something a bit different than usual we're going to try and play a slightly looser style than usual but still with the intention of the video being aimed at beginners long term losing players and generally players that that are below intermediate level. The video is still aimed at the lower end of the micro stakes player pool. But we're going to just play a little bit more aggressive than usual, a little bit, a little bit loose than usual, hoping to generate some spots where we can. We can have plenty to talk about. Flop the nuts, which is, <coughs> gives us plenty to talk about, I guess. Hopefully, we get some action here. We don't. Do think there was much to talk about when everybody falls, I guess. Meow, I am a cat. Possibly one of the worst regulars I've ever come across. Doesn't play full. He or she plays very, very face up. They're just basically a pretty passive tight regular and then um, get quite angry. She, he or she gets quite angry quite quickly. He's actually like, play, do like playing against him or her gonna get an extra little bit of pleasure because of assisting him and her him or her I'm gonna call him him stop saying him or her um they just get quite angry and they berate people left and right they're just generally unpleasant and when I see those players kicking around I do enjoy do enjoy beating them in pots very dry board here he makes a very small sea bet we're gonna try checker is not too many hands he can call with there he kind of needs at least a queen to call don't really want to carry on check calling down there um, if I do have the best hand he's very vulnerable and then kind of just happen just end the pot there if he'd bet a made a larger bet I would not have made that play but he didn't make a larger bet so I didn't make a play That's kind of a lot of the things that I do is pretty much based on size intels and population reads. Most of the population aren't betting small with good hands. They're just betting small with bad hands and big with good hands. So with that in mind, when I see regulars betting small on dry boards and that's usually the point where I'm going to be getting after them and just try to apply some pressure sometimes it works well most of the time it works sometimes it doesn't work well that's not a problem as soon as it doesn't work we just put a note on a player that he isn't conforming to our overall population read and we just don't do that against them again it's quite a simple adjustment we're going to be raising this flop if we see bets again there's the weakish looking uh, pop bet, so he's going to make a raise. He does call this time. My note on this player is he double floats down. So this player is definitely on the stationary side. We're not going to try and double barrel this player when we break the turn. He's already given me the impression that he's a bit of a station, so we're just going to try and hit. We do not hit, so 
which can be done with it. Because there's some players I'll try and bluff up across multiple streets. Some players I want. People that call two streets with pocket eights on Queen XX10 aren't the sort of people I'm going to be double barreling very often in the future. Because why would you? Unless you're planning on like emptying the clip. Doesn't make much sense. We're going to squeeze here with our race queen and isolate with our 9 8 suited. We do not flop a pair with the 9 8 suited, but we do flop two back door draws. So we're going to continue applying some pressure or trying to apply some pressure. When we get four bet by Fisher Egg, we have the easiest fold. This is just never a bluff. Let's see if we're right. Yeah, two kings. Never a bluff. Um, he actually makes a mistake by four betting there when the other guy's pretty much all in. Because he just, he knows, he just, he can never be bluffing there because of the other guy's tax size. So it's quite cool when somebody can never be bluffing, we can make some quite cool faults. His sizing was also quite bad in my opinion. Made it almost a full 3x by 3 bet, which was a <coughs> large enough 3 bet to begin with. And so many of the regulars are just so damn straightforward. Just keep the aggression upon them, keep the aggression up and fold when they when they show like aggression in a way of playing back. It's not the worst strategy in the world. It's a default strategy. Be aggressive, keep being aggressive. When people play back at you, just fold. Because most of the time, the regulars in these games and lower, they don't have the balls to be aggressive with nothing. Most of the time, they just don't have what it takes. So, if they don't have those players in their lockers, and you know, generally speaking, they don't have those players in their lockers, you can just go for it. You can just really just rip some aggression in there. And you know, it's easy to get paranoid and think, well, they can't fold again, they can't fold again, and they just keep folding. And then um, eventually when they don't fold, well, it's fine, you know, because they fold so often that when they don't fold, you just know they have to have something this time, so it's really quite easy to um, to just respect their re-aggression, if you will. Strange chat for some reason. I auto checked, I'm not sure if I had auto checked. Um, across them, normally, don't it's not something I do very often. And then just open and folded the flop, it was really bizarre turn of events. Finding too many spots to be aggressive right now. Now we found one. Fortunately, Adapalm doesn't have too much money. Queen isn't a great card, but it's not like we can ever bet for this turn. We're just going to bet, get it in, and if he has. The Queen or the King Jack will. He has the Queen or the King Jack. There's not a lot we can do about it. And he has the King Ten, which is beautiful.
We are going to 3 bet LOL 114 here without you risk, without risking. Definitely going to squeeze. I'm going to make quite a large squeeze too because much as this theoretically is a typical bluffing spot, it just isn't one that many regulars take as a bluff. So I don't think anyone's going to put me in a bluff here too often. So if I'm not going to put on a bluff, I'm not going to be able to disguise the fact I've got a strong hand. Not really an awful lot of point in using a disguise sizing. And we pick the pot up and we're quite happy with that situation. For those of you who are still watching at this stage, I am a microstates coach and if you would like to know more about me, please do visit my website which is www.regitimepoker.com there's a brief bio on there and there's there are some a couple of testimonials from two people I've worked with recently and um, more testimonials can be provided upon request it's a relatively new website it's not perfect yet. it's not the finished article but I'm still quite pleased with it if you have any questions after reading it uh, my contact details are on there please don't hesitate to get in touch I'd love to speak to you so we have this strumpf character who's seems to like mash in the pot button and make some very large sea bets so this bit's into bomb sea bet here most of the time his sea bets tends to see about around 100% um, I'm going to have a check race here I suppose I think he's going to fall a decent amount. If he doesn't fold well, that's a bit unfortunate for us. He does make a lot of very large bets, and um, I've lost my track of thought now. We're going to three bet the ace queen suited for value. I'm going to continue betting here. Jack Queen's got there, but I'm not overly worried about that. If he's floated the good shot, then fine. If he does raise, we're going to fold. The king isn't a particularly scary card. I think we're going to just check call this river because lots of draws have missed. Jack Queen's got there. Don't think he has ace king very often. Don't think he has king queen very often. He can have a lot of 9x, 8x, Jack 10, that type of thing. He may or may not have to bluff with, and we do win the pot. He called us there, he called our check raise, and then we used a flush draw and didn't bluff the river. I was intending on calling the river, so he probably did well not to bluff there. Because it wouldn't have worked. I wouldn't have enjoyed calling, but I absolutely would have. But now in future. I can now know not to call him on the river if he puts bombs in because if he's not bluffing that spot there when we set him up to do it he's probably not going to be bluffing too often so next time I see him pop up in the and here he is again look just potting it he's just seemed very aggressive we're just going to put a note on him off camera basically saying he maybe doesn't bluff rivers when induced Big pots. It's a question mark because I don't know for sure. And he's going to get the purple tag for now, which is my tag for aggressive players. We're just calling here with the king queen suited because of his stack size. I didn't particularly want a three bet get it in with king queen suited. We get squeezed. We have an easy fold. Three eights, but with three aggressive players behind. Again, we're going to three bet the three eights, but the two eights, sorry for for something value, and just to try and freeze out the players behind us. I don't want to call there and have one of these guys squeeze because then we just have to fold, and that's not fun. And um, we do flop a set, which is nice on a kind of board that can hit a lot of weaker players. Three bet calling range, so I'm really happy with that. Unfortunately. It doesn't hit him this time and he just folds.
and it's hard to understand what he can check call with here. Maybe he has had like pocket jacks or something. Maybe check calls again, he's either got a king or a draw, I would imagine. But that's the kind of hand land people take with two jacks, two tens, that check call the flop, check the turn. Unfortunately, um you couldn't bet much smaller than that. And if he just has a hand is folding, he just has a hand is folding. I'm not gonna bet much smaller to try and tempt him in with his draws because I don't want to give him too much of a good price when he does have he does have a draw. Nine do suited, not a mandatory open by any stretch, but pretty much open any two suited from the button. My imagery snuffy right now. He's seen me bluff raise him twice now. I did it just before the session started, then he saw me check me bluffing with the ace ten. So in my image against snuffy right now won't be great. So whereas that was a decent three bet bluff opportunity because he just isolated a weak limp. Don't really want to be getting in his face too much because he's stretching a sort of player who will play back. And um, I don't want that. I want people to be afraid. But not, I don't want to be making people too angry with me and playing too aggressively at me. It's kind of a fine balancing act. You want to keep people on the back foot, but you don't want to abuse them constantly because eventually they will just get fucking sick of you. And they will start. I mean, eventually you can only push them on so far before they start playing back, I guess. I think Snuffy is one of the guys that's going to play back quicker than most. When players with less than 100 blinds see bet on these dry boards, I just give them lots of credit, particularly when they've missed. When the heads up pot there, we can maybe think about making some kind of play, but um, in a multi-way pot, I think he's just going to have a hand more often than not. Caves made this 3 bit way too small considering how deep we are, so we kind of have to call because of how deep we are. If we were just 100 blinds deep, it's maybe a fault, but we're close to what, 170 blinds deep. Large probe, turn with weak pocket pair, after flop, check, check, check really tell me very much about this exact situation maybe does bet large we can maybe think about making a play because he made a large probe bet according to my read and we do have a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw but that's a decent board for people's 3 betting ranges I'd much rather with a low board there to make a play on But again with the ace queen suited for value. I hope we're gonna get, hope we don't get four bet again. Did get four bet last time we tried this. Wow, I was about was about to call for air uh, to Squeeze my ass, King. Second time in open four bet, but we just can't call it four bet. It's way too big. We're gonna fold, and we're gonna fold the ass, King too.
this king is not a mandatory org in preflop irrespective of what you may think what you may read what you may see in microstakes poker ace king is not a mandatory org in preflop when it's been raised middle position called and squeezed i think folding the ace king is a fine play there i mean if we, we can just call for but i guess and just cross our fingers that people fold but then um, yeah, i'm comfortable enough just just making a making a tight fold there we have four bet ace three bet ace queen twice now i've got four bet i mean i think people are raising wide enough under the gun where we where ace queen suited can be a three bet i think maybe it's probably just as much you just run into hands as much as anything else so we've had a limp and then a weakish looking race so we're going to three bet bluff with the jack seven suited because it's hard work giving that race size too much credit for an isolation race it's like three and a bit x not a typical isolation sizing looks to me like it's a cheap attempt to isolate the people are taking cheap attempts to isolate it's usually because they don't have that strong of a hand in my opinion king seven or suit a lot of people will tell you that to defend and maybe mathematically it is a defend it's a hard hand to play well post flop so um, I'm just not bothered I'm just going to fold that hand mathematically it might be a call but I don't really care about that very much I care about how am I going to be able to perceive with this hand post flop and how am I going to turn it into a winner and we're kind of just hoping that people give up a lot that's that's the best part of the plan the best part of the plan is hoping somebody gives up it's not much of a plan really is it We just don't flop anything with King Seven very often. Yeah, we flop top pair now and again. Maybe we catch somebody making a bluff. We win. Check your database. How many times you win decent pots with King Seven off suit? Um, and you find that you just don't. You just went to losing hand. And even though what ahead of his range would open in, you know, we're not exactly fucking crushing it, are we? Well, there will be lots of people that will swear up and down that that's a super trivial, super easy to defend because mathematically it's right to defend it. Maybe it is, but I don't think it's a huge mistake to fold it. In fact, it can't possibly be a huge mistake to fold it. Gina 3, GGG. I think we're too close to the top of our race to fold here don't like it much we might well end up paying off here which is unfortunate we'll take one straight off if he checks again probably he's going to be prepared to play a much bigger pot I don't think people go for the check twice here with the hand that's beating two jacks right now they might try and slow play the flop just to try and get a check raise in but really doubt people do, on the t do two streets I don't think people are that elaborate with their uh, with the traps and if this player is so elaborate with the traps then they're going to get me for a decent stack I would imagine we might just have sucked out here I'm going to call with the ace nine suited because of the big blind with the green tag and it was a small race and no I didn't think people were going very rare people will go for such an elaborate that trap there usually when they check flop check turn they just don't have anything and that's how it turned out there we were lucky to river the jack which I guess makes our call a lot easier but I would have called anyway against two pretty green tax I'm not going to try and bluff here there are some spots where I would try and bluff but out of position with nothing to two people with green tags isn't going to be that time 
we are going to call this 30 cents because we almost certainly lose but we might not we're getting like seven to one and nine money nearly and we do win and that's why we can't fall to the min bets we're not going to do about this turn against somebody with a small stack yeah, that we're just going to try and hit a nine maybe a jack gets us there too queen certainly doesn't maybe easy fold And this is going to be a very easy fold too. Don't know either of these players to so we'll three exit rather than two and a half x. And we're deep enough where we can call three bets. I'm not going to bet here. I'm just going to try and show our hand down. We might have the winner. Two bets. We can't call with fifth pair to the board. And we can if we hate money, but I don't hate money, so we're not going to do that. deep we have a decent suited this don't know anything about Baktober at all in Belarus so I'm probably gonna three bet this hand just to try and um, make sure we play a heads up pot and particularly want a Belarusian in the pot with us if we can avoid it we get a decent flop for our hand in so much as it's unlikely to hit in much of his range we can continue ripping the big pairs here and we have some backdoor equity and that should have been open I was very much a bit of autopilot I think it was ace two off on the button it's very autopilot and lead out here with our rubbish six we can't really check call and we get race we just fold Unfortunately, as we're ending the video, we're just going through a little spell where we're not picking up a hand, which is unfortunate. But that happens in Noggin Holden a lot of the time. It's hard to make a hand, it's hard to have much in Noggin Holden. Ah, we might just end the video. We've got two playable hands probably going to end the video when we played them both oh my hair master races out of the position um christian's going to three bet here versus oh my hair master or not what is man note pretty taggy probably why to pay him off etc etc um Against the tags under the gun range, I think three betting ace king off from the big blind is magic. And now I think we're just going to bet twice. And having folded, if he's got a hand like two sixes or whatever, let's have him fold it. And he's going to bet again. We're going to really try and put a lot of pressure when he sounds like two sixes, two sevens, that type of thing. And if he wants to call as well, fine. 
Nathan, he folds. We m maybe made him fold the best time there, maybe we didn't, who knows. But um, in rather than relying on showdown value and losing to his underpairs there, I think we're better just to fire out a bet because it's just so rare. He has really a very strong hand when he checks back the flop and just calls a turn. So there we go, that's the end of the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have got this far and you have enjoyed it, and you are looking for some help with the game, please do visit www.regitimepoker.com um, or contact me on Skype. The contact details are in the description part of the video and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, everybody, and I'll be back with another video sometime in the middle of the week. Bye-bye for now.